Hi everyone, my name is Kevin, this is Share the Loop, and I'm here to tell you stories. Stories about what? Today, I did already a video about architecture, about Greek architecture. I'm going to put the link somewhere here on the screen. And I decided to do another, because like I said on the first one, this is supposed to be a series of videos about architecture, the goal being to be able to recognize different styles as it appears on our lands and in our cities nowadays. So we did Greek and I had an objective doing this video in particular. It was about helping people to make the difference between Greek and Roman architecture. So naturally, obviously, I want you today to understand Roman architecture. Roman ancient architecture, so Roman architecture that was made during antiquity. So when we speak about Roman architecture, we must say when? 8th century before Christ until 5th century after Christ. Pretty good chunk of time. And on its biggest territory possible. So everything that will be outside of this place and style will not be called ancient Roman, it will be called Roman inspired, all right? So talking about inspiration, we tend to mix Greek and Roman because of a reason. We all learn at school that Romans got inspired a lot by Greek architecture and sense of beauty and so on. And there is uh, some kind of mistake of understanding when we say that. People tend to think that it is after the Roman invaded Greece, because Greece at some point after 144, I think, uh, before Christ, uh, that the Roman Empire will invade Greece, right? Because Greek uh, people were supporting the enemy of the Romans. It's not like, for example, Roman arrived on, uh, in Greece and say like, wow, that's pretty good here, you know what, let's copy everything. No, it's not like this. First of all, you have to think that before that the Roman Empire really influenced all the uh, Mediterranean Sea, it was Greek civilization and sense of beauty, organization and so on, that was influencing the Mediterranean Sea. So that's what we call the Hellenistic world, the Hellenistic period. All Mediterranean Sea was evolving, was doing its own stuff in, in French we say in Greek stew, in, in Greek uh, environment. <laughs> so uh, that's the idea. You, you, you know, uh, people will know that, that there is uh, Roman Greece after Roman people invaded Greece, but before that there was already a Greek Italian territory. The south of Italy was known as, as Greek people said, Magna Grecia, which means basically the big Greece. You had Greek colony in Italy before the Roman civilization grew. So Romans were already evolving in this kind of influence of culture in the same way that no idea, I mean the same, just a 2,000 years of difference, so it's not exactly the same way. Um, just uh, just uh, in a similar fashion that we are evolving in Europe in under American influence, okay? In our culture, in our... You may, you may not like this, but that's, that's something, you know? We all watch American TV show. I am speaking English, you see, and I'm French. So it means something. Saying this, you will have the elements of architecture, of uh, sense of beauty, like I say, that will be already infused, infused into the Roman culture. Now, talking about architecture, this is an inspiration that I just told you. Now, reinvention. So what do I mean by reinvention? I'm not going to tell you everything there is to know about Roman architecture. The goal is to know the basics. First of all, you will have two new styles, two new orders of column that will appear. And they are a reinterpretation of the three Greek ones, Doric, 
Ionic and Corinthian if you want to know Greek video, huh? you remember? So just uh, check, check this, this one before if you don't, uh, you don't uh, know what I'm talking about. You have first an order called the Toscan order. And basically the Toscan order is a Doric column but way simpler. There, there is no line on the column itself, you see? And it's higher and thinner. So you could say that it's a Doric column with the Ionic proportion, okay? And you have another one called the composite order. And basically, you take the Ionic column, you know, with the spirals, and you take the Corinthian one with all the leaves. You fusion them and you have the composite order. So um, this is basic stuff, but it's already very helpful because you will not see Greek temples with this kind of columns, you know? They, they don't exist, they, they don't do it, Greek people. So you cannot know how to read, even if you go to Greece, you will be able to know when you are seeing something that was made or modified during the Roman domination or before. So that's what I want to tell you, to read a place in space and time. Huh? So, inspiration, reinvention and now development. Before I would have said creation, but no. We used to say that Roman people invented domes and arches. So this is already something that will help you to understand Greek and Roman. I just gave you the clue of the difference between Greek and Roman architecture. There is no Greek temple with arches. It doesn't exist. I didn't know how to do it. Now, I said development and not creation because arches and domes, they were known before that Roman people started to make them. But they really have been going through and through the technology of these uh, two different elements, two, te two techniques, and they developed it way more than the other civilizations that were started to use it before. Arches is superior to no arches because it helps you to have something that is way more resistant. Think about the Colosseum. You'll see that you have like arches all around it because now the pressure that comes from above have to be redirected into the pillars. You know, there is no uh, straight pressure. Aqueduct without arches? Impossible, you could not make them. You could not make them. So arches are very important. Domes as well. The domes, you take the example, the example of the Pantheon in Rome. This is a very impressive dome. Greek, they don't know how to do this. All right. So there is a very important idea to be said about Greek and Roman architecture styles uh, in antiquity. There will be tools, symbols, that will be used a lot to legitimate future powers. What I just gave you guys is the alphabet of manipulation using architecture in all Western powers. When I want to say to you that I am as powerful as the Roman, I will start to use arches. When I want you to say that I am trust, I'm as trustworthy as Greek, I will start to make Greek temple in front of my building, my villa, my bank, my library, my palace or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's why I actually created a video from the week before that is called Tumpled. It's like a kind of a music video, uh, something, something a bit different, but I suggest you to check it out. If you understand all this, you will start to understand what rich and powerful people want to transmit you when you are walking around in the street, a feeling of legitimacy. So, this is very important to know this too. Greek and Roman architecture. Next, we are going to speak about another styles and we are going to make a big jump in time 
we are speaking about the 11th century after Christ and it's going to be present in the next video about architecture. It will be called the Romanesque style. So please stick around if you want to know more. This is uh, the end of this uh, video. Thank you a lot for watching once again. I will publish a new video every Saturday as usual. Please comment, share, like, subscribe and activate the little notification bell if you want to be notified for the next video. Thank you for watching this video and please continue to share the loop as history repeats itself over and over and over and over and over and over again. See you guys and goodbye. Ciao. Ciao, 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 ciao.